Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series starting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at a paradox, the Paradox of St. Petersburg. Now, the St. Petersburg Paradox is a paradox for probabilistic theories of rational choice and the philosophy of economics. It was given its name due to the publication of a paper on the subject by Daniel Bernoulli, a resident of St. Petersburg. However, its invention is credited to Nicholas Bernoulli, his cousin. Such theories have a basis in the works of Pascal, the theories that this is a challenge to. They claim that to decide between two choices, you should multiply the benefits of a particular choice by the likelihood of that choice to determine which to choose, and then compare those kind of expected values that you get. So let's take a look at how that would work. For example, if you have a choice between a 50% chance of winning $100 or a 30% chance of winning $200, you might say, oh, I'm not exactly sure which of those is a better bet or which I should take. In order to figure out which is the better bet, as in which does the probability and the amount that you would win match up best, you could multiply the probability of the value to find the expected value of the choice, or kind of the average amount you would win if you played that game over and over and over again. And you should pick the expected value that is greater. So if you have $100, and 50% chance of winning, your expected value is 50. If you get $200 if you win and have a 30% chance of winning, your expected value is 60. Therefore, according to this rational choice theory, you should pick the 30% chance as it has the higher expected value. However, there are some situations where this does not quite work, or at least our intuitions disagree with the results of this analysis. Take the following game. A coin is flipped over and over again until it comes up tails, and you count the number of times you get a heads before you get a tails. So if you flip the coin, you get a tails right away, the game's over. If you flip the coin, you get a heads, you get a heads, you get a heads, you get a tails, you have three heads, and so on and so forth. You are then paid out two to the n dollars, where n is the number of times the coin came up heads. So two to the power of n. So if you flipped it three times it came up heads and then it came up tails, you would be paid out $8. Two to the third is eight. If it you flipped the coin 10 times, you would be paid, oh, I don't have two to the power of 10 off the top of my head, but something around $1,000-ish. Um, if heads came up four times before tails, you would get $16, five times 32, and so on and so forth. If given the choice between playing this game and being given a certain amount, say $100, what would you choose? So, if you pick the $100, you're not rational, at least by these standards, since the expected value of the game is infinite. Now you might say, well, wait a second, I have on the off the bat, I've got a 50% chance of not getting anything. $100, that's a sure bet. That's certain. And even so, I would have to get a lot of heads in a row in order to get more than $100. So how is it possible that the expected value is greater? Well, because we can calculate this, the expected value by adding the probabilities and payouts for each outcome. So for the probability of getting one head and one tails, that's 50% or you have a probability of 50% of making at least $2, you have a probability of 25% of that 50% of making at least $4 and so on and so forth. When we add all of these probabilities up, we get an infinite amount. We're adding $1 plus $1 plus $1 and so on. So to add up the possibility of winning all the way up, because there is a non-zero possibility of never getting a tails effectively, you are always going to have an infinite benefit here. However, we seem to think that most people would be perfectly rational to take the $100 instead of playing this game, even if there's a very, very, very small chance that they would make a very, very large amount of money. And in fact, to put this another way, someone would still not be considered rational under this theory if they chose a million dollars instead of playing the game. So think about that. Would you choose a million dollars or a small chance that you'd make more than that, but a much higher chance that you'd make nothing? 
most people would pick the million. Now, what can we do to explain this problem if we want to stick with this rational choice theory? So, the problem is that m there's something called the diminishing marginal utility of money. So, if we have a nice graph, we have money going one direction, happiness going the other. This is assuming that the relationship between these two things is linear. That as the money goes up, happiness goes up. So as you get more benefits in terms of money, you're just going to necessarily get more benefits in terms of happiness. You have a nice linear relationship. So it doesn't matter that we aren't translating the amount of money into happiness because since they have a linear relationship, we don't need to. The amount of money you have is going to be equivalent to the amount of happiness that you're getting from a particular choice, or the amount of benefit you're getting from that choice. However, there is a lot of evidence that money is in fact has a logarithmic relationship to happiness, or at the very least, if it's not perfectly logarithmic, there is a diminishing marginal utility of money. At a certain point, if you have zero dollars and someone hands you a hundred dollar bill, you get a lot more happiness than if you have ten million dollars and someone hands you a hundred dollar bill. You get more happiness from a hundred dollars when you have nothing than when you have a hundred million dollars. And the more money you have, the less that extra little bit of money is going to count for. And so, if you're already up to a million, going up to 10 million with the next flip of the coin isn't going to do you that much more good. And so you don't really have that kind of infinite possibility of getting infinite happiness because it slows down as the curve goes forward. This means that large amounts of money should count for less happiness if there's a low chance of you getting them. And small amounts should count for more. This means that the actual expected value of the game is not infinite. Because what we care about is how happy you are, the amount of utility you're getting, not the amount of money that you have. Because money is not a perfect measure of benefit. Stay tuned for more videos on decision theory and the philosophy of economics. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you are interested in or you want to see more videos on these topics. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.